I got into comedy because I had observations like that. And one of the reasons I wrote and performed the show that I just mentioned is to answer the question that I got asked so many times. Mark, how the fuck could you find that funny? <laughs> so, okay, here you go. Here's, here's, here's what led to my sense of humor. Um, what's the best? I, I, I agonized when I was writing the show to, like, where do I start? What's something that can bring us all together? What's something that's a unifying factor? What's something that we can bond as a community over? A bank robbery, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pretty normal day. I was sitting in the federal halfway house I was living in at the time shooting speedballs. <laughs> Does anyone here not know what a speedball is? Most of you? Yeah, a few of you? So there's a few cool people in the room, right? All right. So speedball is a mixture of cocaine and heroin. And people always want to know what do they feel like, right? What do they feel like? What do they feel like? And it's like, well, they feel pretty great. Um, <laughs> And to give you an example, I've had to come up with some analogies uh, for people to understand. People such as yourselves, people whose parents hugged you when you were kids. <laughs> so, a speedball feels like, you know when you're in the bathroom and you drop your smartphone and you catch it just before it hits the toilet? For four to six hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speedball feels like uh, getting a hug from your grandma after she paid off your student loans for four to six hours. Speedball feels like eating a warm apple pie that's full of heroin. Great, right? No. So I'd run out and I had no money. And when you're an unemployable, drug addicted ex-convict who's never had a job in his life, where is the best place to get money? The bank. So I got on the bus, because I'm a baller. I got to the bank and I walked in and there was a lineup. There's always a lineup at the bank, no matter what you go for or how quick you're going to be, right? And I thought about asking the people, saying, hey guys, can I just scooch ahead? I'll be less than 90 seconds, I swear, right? And Or making jokes with the audience and going, oh, I'm about to be richer than you think. But I didn't, didn't quite get on like that. So I, I got to the front of the line and my turn came. And this is where people are thinking like ski mask, automatic weapon, all that stuff. No, 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 no. If anything, this was aggressive panhandling. I got, I said to the teller, this is a robbery, give me $1,500. Why only $1,500, right? Yeah. Because I'm a humble drug addict, okay? Um, so she goes and gets it, comes back. And that's when I learned where Vancouver women get their bitchy reputation from, because she slams the wad of money on the counter and says, have a nice day. That's when I realized I'm never dealing with TD Canada Trust ever again. <laughs> but I did all that because I was alone and afraid and the drugs weren't taking that away anymore. I robbed the bank to get sent back to prison. I grew up in a family that's uh, what I like to call middle class fucked up. I don't know if anyone knows that one or not, right? Like your parents are married, but they shouldn't be, <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. Like, they're more concerned what the neighbors think than what's actually going on with you, kind of thing. Uh, my dad, my mom would threaten my dad with divorce if he didn't do something with me. Uh, she'd pin him against me. My mom would call me a faggot when she was mad at me and stuff like that. But at least we had food on the table and all that kind of stuff, so that's why social service, like, realistically, I should have been apprehended by social services many times. But they don't come into that postal code. They don't apprehend kids from that postal code, right? So, I grew up with this sense of not belonging, a deep sense of internal alienation. No matter where I go, no matter what context I'm in, you're better than me and you have it figured out. You somehow got the script to life that wasn't given to me when I was born. And long story short, many forms of self, uh, self-soothing, maladaptive coping, all these things, I, I eventually ended up on drug, with drugs, right? And I, I graduated through the drugs really fast. 15 years old, I started uh, shooting cocaine and heroin on the downtown east side of Vancouver, and I would steal to support my habit. And I basically got in with an older crowd, one individual in particular, I was 15, he was 28, he was the coolest guy I ever met in my life, and he taught me how to do B&Es. The first time I ever did a B&E was uh, basically a very democratic thing, because I knew in order to get his acceptance, I needed to do a crime with him, just to earn his trust, right? So I said, his name was Steve, I said, Steve, I'd like to do a B&E with you, please. 
And he said, okay, when would you like to do this B&E? And I said, as soon as possible, please. <laughs> so we went out looking for a B&E one night, and it was pretty fun. It's like a movie, right? It's like an action movie. You're kind of creeping around in the shadows and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, he, he was the expert, so he finally settled on a house. He said, we're going to do this one. And I froze in my tracks because I, I thought I bit off more than I could chew. I never, I'd never done anything quite that bad before. And I, he could sense my hesitation. And he did something to me that to this day still sends chills up my spine no matter how many times I tell this story. He kneeled down and looked at me like a little league coach about to give the team a pep talk. And he said, no matter what, I will not leave you behind. Repeat, no matter what, I will not leave you behind. I had never had anyone, literally anyone, talk to me like that before. I had never been treated like I was valuable before. I had never been treated like someone cared about me. I had never been talked to or treated with love before. In the blink of an eye, with that one statement, Steve became like a best friend and a father figure to me. And fuck, was I ever down to do a B&E after that, man? <laughs> like a fucking platoon of Navy SEALs behind me. I went in and sn snaked through the window because I was a small one, right? Go in there and, you know, wasn't much to report. We got a VCR out of it. Some of you might remember what those are. <laughs> and, uh, but the, the experience itself was worth more than its weight in gold. And it basically, it, it, it prepared me for a life of crime. And I did a lot of crime and I did a lot of drugs. I did a lot of drugs and a lot of crime. And when you do a lot of crime and you do a lot of drugs and you do a lot of crime to support that drug habit, you end up in jail. And again, I have to condense this story for the sake of the show. Uh, from 15, to 26, I spent 10 years of my life locked up. The last sentence I did, which was part of the bank robbery, was a combined sentence, it was nine years. When I was 21 years old, I got sentenced to nine years in prison for a crime spree. And uh, again, I have to skip a bunch of stuff here. This is a long story that I can't, it's hard to do in 10 minutes, right? So uh, I eventually did get clean again after I robbed the bank and I went to a treatment center. And while I was at that treatment center, I met a group of people. Um, it's, we're not supposed to mention the group of people. It's anonymous, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and there's, there's 12 stairs or something like that. <laughs> and while I was there, I met this group of people and they, they included me in their activities and they were nice to me and stuff like that. But when I went to that treatment center, because I'd fucked up so many other conditions and releases and stuff like that, I had a special condition where I had to return to prison upon completion of the treatment program, win, lose, or draw. So I had to go back to the treatment center, and while I was there, I lost hope again, because institutionalization is a funny thing. It's like if you're away from it, you don't think about it, but as soon as you get back in an institution, it's like your brain, in order to cope, has to pretend that the outside doesn't exist anymore, or something like that. It's, I think it's to prevent you from going insane because of the loss of control. While I was there, uh, I got a letter from a guy, a guy named Mark, uh, and that's, that's not a metaphor for my inner self or anything like that, that's, that would be cheesy. <laughs> not, no. uh, he was an actual guy, he was a guy I met at these, in these groups, and if you added it all up, he was, I, don't, I probably talked to him in, for less than 30 minutes in, in 10 interactions, just, hey, how you doing? I didn't even remember who he was at first. And in the letter he said, Hey man, I, I remember you from those groups. I like what you had to say, you're a really smart guy. And I look forward to when you get out because when we can do things together. And basically what Mark did when he wrote that letter to me, because I eventually, like I got out shortly thereafter, but when he wrote that letter to me, he was the, one of the first adults or people in my life who showed me care and concern and wanted to include me in life and wanted to help me for no other reason than face value. He just liked me for me. I did no performing, I did no acting, I did no lying, I did no drugs, I, did, I didn't have to do anything like steal to earn trust. He just wanted to help me get back into the community and become, I guess, a law-abiding citizen or whatever you want to call it, right? And I got out a few months later, December 30, or October 31st, 2007, 
and I have been out since. I have not committed any crimes, and I like pay my own bills, and I drive a car that I don't start with a screwdriver, and all the time, right? The driver's license has my name on it. I have shitty credit, but sort of okay, you know, not good credit, but like not bad credit, but that kind of like normal person credit, right? Like I can't get a mortgage, but they'll give me lots of credit cards, kind of thing. So that that kind, of, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So thank you very much. Yeah.